So hello, welcome to the video and welcome to Heathrow Terminal 5. I've just flown in on another super premium British Airways short haul business class experience from Dublin and I'm not flying out again until tomorrow morning which means I had to take a decision about what to do this evening. Now my flight tomorrow morning is early but it's not that early but it's sufficiently early that it would be really tricky for me to get home and get back again in the morning in time so I booked myself an airport hotel. So this video is going to be an addition to my occasional series of airport hotels. Occasional because I don't make them often and occasional because you only occasionally watch them. They are consistently the worst performing videos I ever make but the feedback I do get from people who do watch them is that they are quite helpful so I'm going to persevere. Now arriving into Terminal 5 the obvious option was to stay at the Sofitel which is in Terminal 5 or at least it's connected to Terminal 5 via a covered walkway but it's quite expensive it's a nice hotel but it's quite pricey so I've decided to stay at the Thistle Hotel up on the Bath Road. Now the Bath Road extends pretty much the entire side of the Heathrow campus and I think the Thistle Hotel is the westernmost of all of them but to get to it you have a unique opportunity which is because it's on the edge of the business parking you can access it via an automated driverless tram a pod even and I'm really quite excited about experiencing this so if you'd like to see what the Thistle Hotel is like and what the pods are like here at Heathrow's Terminal 5 stick around Hi, I'm Matt and this is Matt's Planet. I aim to entertain, educate and inspire with my travel adventures from planning to execution. I'll show you how you can travel in style for a lot less than you'd think. So subscribe so you can come with me. The pod station is at the southern end of Terminal 5. That's the end furthest from the first wing and is the end closest to where the various trains arrive. It's not well signed within the terminal, but if you exit from the arrivals level you'll find this lift which takes you to the pod station on level 2. You're met with quite a futuristic scene, or at least a futuristic scene set in the context of a 20 year old concrete car park. I'm not sure what these other people were waiting for, but I requested conveyance to the B station, which is the one closest to the thistle, and walked straight onto a pod, or limboed onto a pod as there's not a lot of headroom. I pressed the go button, the doors closed and after waiting a moment for another couple of pods to dock we reversed onto the track and we're off. It really was like something from Disney World. I'd rushed to get to the pods while there was still light. Can you tell that intro was a bit rushed? I could. But even with the last light of the day, the cloud cover and rain meant I didn't get brilliant footage of the trip. But here it is anyway. It gets a fair move on actually as it rounds the northwestern corner of the airfield. This is actually called the pod parking facility, contrary to what I said in the intro, although at a rate of £56 per day, including the pod transfers, you probably need a business expense account to afford it. But if you can, it's a really fun and quick way to park and access the terminal. And after bang on five minutes of poddling along, I arrived at the B station. When we stop, the doors will open automatically. The thistle is straight ahead of you. The thistle will charge you £8 per person per trip which you need to take into account when pricing up accommodation options. 
I buzzed reception and they let me through the gate. The exterior of the Thistle Hotel is not the most attractive, but after another drizzly trudge through the car park, I reached the reception area. All in all, it took me 12 minutes to get from T5 to the hotel. I paid £68 for this night's accommodation, plus £8 for the pod ride. I got a bus back to the airport the next morning. It's important to bear in mind that if I'd travelled to and from T5 with a wife and two kids, the pod cost would have doubled my room rate. Hello. A friendly and speedy nice check-in check process and I was off to my room. The hotel's corridors were a little smarter than the building's exterior. The room, well, it, it's a hotel room. Not a huge space and not a massive bed, but it was plenty big enough for just me. Air conditioning, a desk, quite a lot of wardrobe space actually, too much perhaps, as I reckon the average stay length is 1.001 nights and very few guests would ever unpack anything. And the bathroom, probably a deep enough bath to actually take a bath in. That was body wash and conditioner in the shower. Here's a closer look at the tea and coffee making facilities, plus the complimentary water, which was sparkling, which would thrill my mate Steve. And a closer look at the slightly out of focus room service menu. And I got a shot of the thrilling vista from the window once morning came. Great for car or cloud enthusiasts. In the lobby is a snack shop. Pricing very much reflected the convenience of not having to leave the building to acquire your processed sugar. And beer is a snack, right? Although at eight pounds for a bottle of Stella, I can't imagine a scenario where I'd ever be that thirsty. The property boasts a runway view, bar and restaurant, although it was closed to refurbishment when I stayed. The name does offer hope of a good experience though. The F&B revenue is important to the hotel though, so they had repurposed a meeting room as a temporary venue. The menu looked quite similar to the room service menu and was also priced for the convenience of not having to leave the building. It was quite well patronised though. I did leave the building though, not quite as far as the pub that's just up the road and looks nice on the internet, but I did check out the McDonald's, from the outside only I'll note, plus the neighbouring garage which does have a small shop with far more reasonably priced snacks than the hotel's lobby store offered. It really wasn't a pleasant evening and the thistle really doesn't look great from the outside, but before bed I did take the opportunity for a little plane spotting. So, to borrow a line from friends, mornings here, mornings here. I slept quite well, the bed's good, it's long enough, it was wide enough for me on my own. It was just the firm side of perfect, which is probably what I'd prefer it to be, and I slept pretty well. People stay in airport hotels because they have early flights, so there was a bit of thumping and clanking around going on at 5am. Sound insulation in here isn't brilliant. I'm on the ground floor as well, so I've pretty much got five neighbours, and I think all of them got up and moved out between 5 and 6 this morning. But you know what? It was a good night's sleep, and I feel refreshed and ready for the day. So my flight today departs from Terminal 3 and I could take the pods back to Terminal 5 and then take a train across, but I'm actually going to check out the buses which will take me directly into the bus terminal between Terminals 2 and 3. So, let's go! Checkout was quick and easy and it seemed to have stopped raining. This property is great for Terminal 5 if you don't mind paying for a pod. There is also a bus service across if you want to save a few quid. As we'll see, it's also reasonably located for terminals 2 and 3, but it would be a pain for T4. The pod and trains would be the best option if that was where you needed to go. The bus stop to the central Heathrow bus terminal was a five minute walk away, but it wasn't an obvious one, as you needed to go through this alley and across this road.
This is a property along the Bath Road that you really wouldn't want to spend any time in. Then bus stop S is a little further along. You want the A4 bus and may be concerned as it's not advertised on the bus stop but it's a Berkshire and Thames Valley service rather than the London Transport one so doesn't get a mention. The City Mapper app is the one I use for public transport in London and in a growing number of other cities too. And the bus came as advertised and it was less than 10 minutes into the bus station. So the Thistle, it was nice enough. You don't expect much from an airport hotel and it didn't really deliver much, but the bed was good and the pricing was even better, even after adding the cost of the pod. It was also nice to have some refreshment options within easy walking distance of the property, which isn't always the case for Bath Road hotels. I would very happily stay there again, even if I wasn't travelling to or from T5, as that bus to the central terminals was just as quick and easy as it is from the other Bath Road hotels. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, give the video a like, please leave me a comment, is this a hotel you'd consider staying in, subscribe if you're new, and I have a Patreon account if you'd like to support what I do more directly. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.